Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you as always for your tweets. Forget Will Smith and that other one. The men in black are back. I almost mucked that up. <laughs> it's well scripted, this show. Ah, beautiful. Everyone's looking great. Very slimming is black. Frank, what are your thoughts on Zayek life at Chelsea so far? He hasn't hit the highest compared to his time in Ajax. Do you think he fits Tuchel's style? Does he have a future at Chelsea, considering the fact that there are rumours of him leaving? Yes, I've heard about that too. I mean, it's uh, it started pretty well with Ver with Werner. They, they they were the two, two where uh, I think settled down pretty uh, quickly. But after he got uh, he got injured, and since then I have to admit that uh, it's, it's been hard for him to be in the first eleven and to to do well. On top of it, last game he played in the middle of the park in central, being too central, and I think uh, the best. Um, uh, area he had, that he has to go is on the on the right side, like uh, uh, like Mares for Manchester City. So they are both the same type of player, and it's where they are doing the best. So hopefully things are going to change, and uh, and if he's good enough, he's going to stay. Of course, if he doesn't play, he's not going to be happy, and he's going to be willing to live. That's quite understandable. Anytime I put out tweets asking questions for Jan, most of them about Erling Haaland and his future. This one, no exception. Haaland to City, what are the chances, Jan? Well, I think there is a chance that uh, they will sell a big star Dortmund this summer. I think that's going to be Jadon Sancho. I think I have promised him that after that thing that happened last summer. Erling Haaland, they want to keep desperately. I mean, this is Borussia Dortmund. They want to keep the best player. I think that Erling Haaland would like to play for the fantastic crowd of Dortmund, the yellow wall and everything, that he hasn't done too much since he arrived there. But we all know this is all about top four in the Bundesliga. If they don't get into the Champions League, Erling Haaland in every interview says, I love Champions League, I love Champions League. We know there is some process, a dynamic that would, would just happen if they don't get among the, the, the top four. No, they are three points behind Frankfurt. It's still in there. And we saw today how happy they were when they won the, uh, the cup. And they can win the trophy there after Bayern is knocked out. So I think it's most likely that he will stay. Could he go to Manchester City? Of course he could. He will, could go to a lot of the big clubs. Frank, can a goalkeeper be a truly effective captain like Joris at Spurs? Hmm... He can, and we, we, we saw many uh, uh, fantastic goalkeepers being captain, but I think they, they're far away from the middle of the park, and uh, it can be a problem during the game. But um, uh, Oliver Kahn for Bayern Munich, um, Fabien Barthez as well, and uh, Jean-Luc Ettori for Monaco, and so many others that I could, that I could name, Dino Zoff in, uh, in Italy, they were absolutely fantastic captains, uh, on top of being fantastic goalkeepers. Um, I, would, I would be a coach, I would never put a goalkeeper uh, as, a, as a captain because he's not in the middle of the park. Like right. I would never put a striker as a captain because he doesn't see the game. So a central defender, a, a midfielder Hello? in the middle of the, the, the park, they will be, can be a captain. Uh, Jan, Frank suggests you're you not smart to enough that. to be a captain. I'm being a very I've proud captain. that. <laughs> I've never been, I was a very proud captain of my country, 15 times. Very, very proud. But I understand what Frank is saying with the goalkeepers, because you can't be a captain of a team with gloves on. You can't be a captain. You need, you, you need, you need so then you need some leaders on the pitch. But I agree on uh, with with Frank when when he was talking about the examples. I remember Dino Soff. I mean, Dino Soff in 1982 World Cup. He was fantastic for Italy. What a great World Cup, by the way, with 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 Rossi and Kant. Uh, fantastic. Okay, what kind of music did you guys listen to in the locker room during your career? Did you have a personal Walkman <laughs> you listened to? Or did someone just blare <laughs> music out loud for all the boys to enjoy? Who was the DJ in your locker room? Well, let's get the Walkman. Mm. Was Walkmans around in your day, Frank, or have they not been invented yet? <laughs> 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 You're such a mean person. Uh, we, of course, I had Walkman, uh, but uh, I didn't use it. It wasn't part of our lives in uh, in the dressing room. Only one person was listening to music was Bernard Lama, uh, the the French goalkeeper playing for Paris Saint Germain uh, and the national team. 
but it, it wasn't fancy. I mean, we, we tried to be tuned in or something else, but nobody uh, had some music to listen and it wasn't like a big radio, like uh, you could have down the street, you know, walking like that, yep. you know, yes. and, uh, and, put in, and getting in within the dressing room with uh, <laughs> kind of uh, music, crazy music. No, 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 no. We, we didn't have music in the dressing room, no. Yeah, and I imagine as captain of Norway, you just blasted a ha all the time. <laughs> yeah, I did. Take on me. Uh, I, I had that yellow Sony, Sony Walkman that everybody had. I yep. remember that. But the, the worst thing in the dressing room was when, when you got a bit older and the, and the young kids came in with their music that I, I wanted to relax with Tina Turner, Simply the Best. <laughs> Very boring, of course. And then they came in, like Frank was saying, with this big, big thing. And, and remember, I played in Germany too, and you can, remember, you can imagine all the German music that went through the, through the dressing rooms. I mean, that was... Oh my God. Abba! Somehow liked it, but it was... Yeah. Uh, they didn't go marching in, so that that was thank God for that. A lot of David Hasselhoff, I imagine, Jan. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> he was big in Germany, big <laughs> in Germany. Uh, but just going back to you playing simply the best. <laughs> well, absolutely, Tina Turner. We went for all the cliches, and I remember I tried everything. I was 17 or 18. I went with this small ball that Rocky had. Remember, he had a small ball yeah. in Rocky One or something. I tried everything that everything to, to improve my game. It didn't always uh, happen for me, but I, I still tried. Uh, let's talk about a video that I saw yesterday of you, Jan, which this question is about. Uh, how was the experience of playing electroshock football? Now, if you haven't seen this video, hunt it down, it's on my Twitter feed. Basically, a television company hooks up ex-Norwegian players to electric meters on their ankle and then presses it occasionally to give them an electric shock while playing. It seems the most extremely stupid idea, but the stupider thing, surely, <laughs> is that you agree to do it, yeah. Absolutely, and it was a big, big success. It went viral, it was unbelievable. And then they came to us and said, can you play a game against England? And I said, no, I'm not playing a game against England. And these two moderators who kind of took up the heating or the or the or the, the, the power of it yeah they, i think hated me because i got the worst ever i, I had pain in my i had headache all the day and they were doing crosses and, and when a ball came to me i thought now they will go all in and of course they did but it was fun to watch i i, I have a look and try it i mean no I so no feel i sorry won't for try the it why would be that oh let's get electrocuted every five seconds find some crazy Dan, people try the... it try it when you have a show when you talk to craig burley and then try it it will help all of us yeah why did you say yes because it was entertainment and my channel and my channel said i had to do it there you go that's it that's the main thing <laughs> frank you want you'd want at least five yeah, figures to... for that wouldn't you well, yeah, no, of course, of course, you know, you have to be paid a lot to be tortured that way, you know, yes. you have to be crazy. Uh, you have to be no, you, you, only, only Jan Fjortov can accept that for free. <laughs> oh, of course, I would never do that. I just, just to sit, just to sit here to talk to a world champion, I will pay for it, Frank, you know that. Oh, beautiful words. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Yeah, I will send you my details. I will send you my bank details. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Uh, be sure to check out that video. It is ridiculous, honestly. Uh, you, we will be back tomorrow without any electrocutions, hopefully. Uh, well, I can't remember what we're doing. Lots of people are playing. We'll be talking about them with Stuart Robson. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.